So I'm sure uh, Michael might Michael might not have the link. Why not? Did you did you ping him on Slack or did you hit him on yeah. Teams? <laughs> uh put him on Slack. I didn't yeah, I didn't well you can do Teams oh, as well. Oh. <laughs> not sure which one works best. So a question for everyone. How did you find the link? Did you find on Twitter or did you find on the uh, dscommunity.org page? Website, good. Everyone website? Twitter, okay. Good, so both works. Yeah, thank you. All right, we'll try to be better. Yeah, you can start. Uh, you can start on your yeah. Yeah. So um, cool. Well, we'll kick off then. Um, I've just pinged Michael to to um, I'll let him know we're just going to kick off. Um, so yeah, I think I've got an agenda up on the screen, but uh, I guess it'll be fairly fluid. So I guess the first thing is yeah, apologies for last week. I'm not really sure what happened there. I think we all um, maybe still in holiday mode. Uh, maybe not. Um, but yeah, it, it seemed to everyone got the wires crossed, and I think uh, most people weren't available. Um, on the call or jumped in and myself I jumped in quite late so so missed the call so apologies again um, hopefully we'll do better um, but we'll be back to the usual usual um, ICS the usual calendar file next slot so this is just a one-off uh, calendar file so you don't need to um, continue to use this one so we'll go back to the old teams meeting um, so yeah, I guess the first thing we've got on the agenda is the uh, is the new community committee member. So um, uh, I think we all know who that that would probably be. So Gail, who's obviously been working working as a as a V team and orange badge at Microsoft um, on on helping uh, get the DSC community up and running. Um, now that he is he is moved into a into a new role um it's definitely high time gail joined the community committee so welcome gail who's obviously done amazing work um uh, you want to share a few words thank there? you no thank you no actually uh we, we will see how it goes but yes yeah, so my contract uh, for this at least uh, terminated uh end of december with uh, microsoft so i moved to some of the things but we'll see there might be some other opportunities uh, to work again uh, with microsoft but but we'll see in the future how it goes but yeah um, at least at the moment uh, yeah i'm just a, a community contributor like everyone else awesome well yeah it's it's great to have um, have you on as a, as another committee member uh, to help us keep this keep everything going um regarding the committee member nomination process we can actually other people can be nominated into as a committee member as well and there is a process on the on the DSC community website um, around how that can be done so if you do want to nominate other committee members um, please have a look there and and um, and nominate away yeah, the, the idea, I would just say the idea is uh, it's easier if we're a small group of of committee uh, just to make decisions quicker. But at the same time, if people are just really involved and, and help a lot, then it makes sense to to bring them on. So then we have more more power to make decisions and to, uh, to effect changes. Awesome. Um, okay, and this is, so the next item um, is... Uh, a question that came up, um, Daniel Both, I think, came up, um, raised this in the Slack channel, which is what what do we do if a PR doesn't get reviewed in a reasonable time frame? I think this is driven out of a few PRs, a few um, modules that aren't as active um, as some of the others, and pull requests get sent through, and they don't get reviewed in a in a reasonable time frame, and they just uh, uh, end up stagnating, never getting getting released. So, what is the process we want to adopt when this happens? So, I'll open this up to the community. I don't have a particular feeling on this, but I thought it would be, you know, be good to discuss. We can then get an answer, and we can put a process in place.
So has anyone anyone got any preference for this? I'm actually not looking at the, the comments at the moment. Uh, I'm looking at the comments on the roof. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So for, for specifically for what Daniel uh, said, um, Daniel is the maintainer of the repository and he's asking for the other people to come and review his changes. So uh, what we discussed last time is we need to encourage people to review and do code reviews on other repositories. But on the, in this case, um, I think it's better to improve the modules rather than uh, always enforce a change. So if you're the maintainer, I would say, and I think that's what the, the guideline says at the moment, you are allowed after, after a short while, you are allowed to just uh, approve you on if no one reviews it or no one has any objection you are allowed to just approve it um, currently currently there's a, uh, after 24 hours that you're allowed to uh, review your own changes as a maintainer and uh, merge the changes uh, that limit uh, uh, the suggestion from daniel was that it, that limit should be seven days uh, but at that time he didn't know probably the guideline was 24 hours uh, the 24 hours we can discuss that uh, as an example i had um, uh, two years ago uh, i was starting working on sql server dsc uh, it was called x uh, sql server at that time uh, there were no other maintainer or uh, contributor that uh, that i know of at least that wanted to review the problem there was I, I had to start review on my own. Uh, so uh, the 24 hour limit was there in the maintainer's guide uh, uh, at that time as well, as well. If we would have seven days, uh, seven days limit, that would make all the time it took to get SQL Server DC where it is today should actually be the time it took should probably be a factor of seven. So by having those 24 hours, it actually sped up the process of actually get the module to a, a HQRM state. So uh, personally, I feel like 24 hours is a good lim a limit, but I'm okay by raising it if someone likes, uh, if it's a problem that the community doesn't have time to get uh, to the PR before, for example, I merge it after 24 hours. Is it, yeah. Does anyone see that as a problem? I, th I think it's common sense. Uh, if you feel like it needs absolutely someone to review it, then you can wait longer. But uh, if it's security, for instance, security fixes, or even if it's improving something, probably you should not wait that long. I guess I guess it's it's now that um now that we're actually able to release sort of more frequently on you know on demand we can potentially re release as soon as a fix is done or as soon as a PR is through. Perhaps it is it is worth keeping it short for those security fixes because previously if we did have an urgent security fix we weren't it wasn't going to be released anyway it was going to go into the into dev but it wasn't going to hit master and go to the gallery anyway sure. so it does make a bit of sense to keep it short. Um, but obviously, you know, some of these module, some of these uh, uh, still being able to have a, a number of people able to review, I think it's still important. It's kind of good, you know, obviously, if we do keep it at 24 hours and say, OK, you've got a, um, a PR that needs reviewing. And as soon as 24 hours is done, we just go and approve it and get it through. We kind of lose some of the value that we gain from having other people review. So it's, I guess it's a bit of a balancing act. Yeah. I'm okay I'd, by erasing it, so. I'd go for common sense. I would say 24 hours is the minimum, but then people should have common sense to say, well, if you're not really in a rush on any, if it's something which is big or, or, or might have an impact, then you should probably wait at least uh, 70 something hours. So then we then we change the guideline to that, uh, I suggest. Uh, anyone does not approve on that? Please comment on the chat. Yeah. yeah, we'll probably put that in the notes, which actually I should take notes. So yeah, thanks, Gail. You're right. I forgot about that. 
Yeah, sorry. No, I forgot about taking notes. So, so let's say uh, 72 hours, three days. 24, 24 hours uh, minimum. Yeah. And uh, if, uh, if no urgency. Hours. Yeah, yeah. to fix this even faster. Also, if uh, the CI, there's a problem with the CI or um, anything else blocking the CI, those should be able to be merged faster as well, I think. Yes. And we've also got the high priority tag as well um, that we don't tend to use for, for urgent issues. Do we use the high priority to indicate ones that we want to move merge? faster because sometimes I'll get a request to review but because I've got a whole lot of other reviews banked up somewhere else I might say oh, I'll get to that in a couple of days um, yeah I'd, I'd really I'd really advise people like if you want to get someone to review your 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 PR uh, just come in, in the slack channel and just say um, like just keep asking us to review like say yeah I've opened that uh, yesterday can you please have a look and then just every day tell us when you opened it and then tell us that you'd like to review because we have so many github notifications that um, I just don't even look at them anymore so if I if I have uh, Johan or Daniel asking me to review something and merge something I just look at like whatever they ask me if I got five minutes I will go and try to do it and obviously smaller PRs always easier to to uh, to review and to merge and now that we've got uh, continuous uh, deployment, it's easier to do small PRs. So really encourage you to do small PRs. Uh, back to Daniel's question, the high priority, I usually just use it on issues, but it's, uh, it, it, we can use it on PRs as well. I never thought about it. But uh, uh, the problem is contributors can't set the high priority tag themselves, so. Good point. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a good point. But if they comment on, uh, that it should be a high priority. We can tag it, and uh, the rest of the uh, rest of the contributors can see it, even if it if we can't uh, p review it. So maybe someone else can pick that one up first. Yeah, I definitely think um yeah Gail's point that you know DMing or PMing someone on um on Slack is 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 actually a good way because sometimes I just miss all you know I try and watch all the GitHub notification emails, but sometimes you just miss them um so yeah if you can if, you can, a, if you're not getting action and it's about timing if you send me a slack message and i'm at work in the morning i won't have time to look at this but if you do mm. this uh, and roughly when i'm back home then obviously so uh, you have a much greater chance for me to just open the laptop and then look at the pr straight away so keep nagging but i'll, I'll put that in the notes as well awesome cool any other comments, thoughts on this one? I know Daniel Barth is not here, so is he on the call? No, I don't think so. No. Okay. All right. So, so what's the what's the action? Is we will we will um, keep it at twenty four, or are we going to go and and up, change so, that? So we'll update twenty four minimum on um, twenty four minimum unless like uh, like twenty four minimum and usually around seventy hours is is best practice if there's no urgency, but like if it's security fixes, CI blocking, uh, try 24 hours minimum, but obviously if it's a security fix and you can just raise it straight away, like just, just fix it. Okay. I can, uh, I can change that on the guidelines. Yeah, we'll, we'll update the guidelines. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks guys. Okay. All right. We'll move on to the next one. So the, the, the next uh, item is obviously migration to the new continuous delivery process. Obviously, um, uh, uh, Gail and, and Johan have implemented a new continuous delivery process that all the modules are starting to adopt. Um, and it's using Azure DevOps, moving away from AppVay, a whole lot of other stuff. So there's a, a huge amount of documentation and blog posts and automation that, that the guys have put together. So I just thought I'd hand over to, to Johan to really update what's currently out there available to help maintainers migrate to this new process. So over to you, Johan. So, so maybe, just maybe before Johan starts, so you've done, 
so so maybe you can show one one you've done, uh, Daniel, and then you show roughly like the uh, Azure DevOps what it looked like, cool. and and these like just the basic sure. things, the the result, the end results if you want. Yeah, give me two seconds. I'll just because sure. uh, you're already sharing the screen in my view. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, actually, I'll share a different screen. Otherwise, I'll get into DevOps, apologies. If people have questions, feel free to type them in the chat and then we'll, we'll bring it up. If, you, if there's things you want us to cover, if you have questions, I mean, if it's not related to what the agenda says, just feel free to type it and then we, we can discuss it afterwards. Or whatever it's really about. Um, okay, so so the the well, I'm not currently signed in, so that'll that'll have to do. So the new process or new structure of the of the GitHub repositories changes mainly in that most of the source is moved into a source folder, um, and a lot of new files are added, such as an Azure DevOps um, uh, build definition. Uh, and some other PowerShell um, modules and YAML files are added into the root of the, the repository. We're no longer using an AppVayer um, uh, repository, sorry, uh, AppVayer can, um, file. So I'm just going to ref refresh my screen there. Uh, the build badges should all now be the same, but you've now got new build badges, which will take you to the Azure pipelines itself. So if I go through to the Azure pipeline, So in this case, the build's not found. There it is there if I click on that. Um, so the new build pipeline is is running in Azure DevOps. That gives us a few a few things over at VAR that we didn't have before, which is um, in our case, we can run uh, more builds at once, I think. Is that correct, Gail? Yes, it is. Uh, okay. it, it, you can, for it, we can, uh, we can e run 10 jobs uh, par in parallel, and each job can run for six hours. Uh, that's the, the difference on AppVayor is that in AppVayor, we can only run each job. We, could, we couldn't, yeah, we could only run one job for 60 minutes, but we could run several jobs, but they didn't run in parallel. Yes, gotcha. so, so the difference, just, just a quick note on that, the difference we've seen, um, uh, it's, uh, it's not me, but it takes a bit longer to run the similar tests on Azure DevOps because it looks like the build worker are not as performant as uh, on Advaya. But at the same time, as we can run, let's say, the unit tests in uh, on one job, and then at the same time, we run the integration test on another job and things like this. And we have no limit of 60 minutes, as uh, as uh, Johan said. I'm just going to sign in. So as you can see, we've got our um, our continuous delivery, which will go and uh, build and release in three stages. You've got your um, your build, test, and deploy. And the deploy stage only occurs when I'm on a on a merge to master. Um, so, which basically is now we've no longer got a dev branch uh, in our GitHub repositories. We merge directly to master. All PRs are going to go into master. When those PRs are merged, that will automatically trigger off the CI to fire, which will uh, create a build and a test, and then finally deploy to the gallery. For all PRs, a new version of the module will be deployed, but it will be a preview version. So as you probably may have noticed over the last few few um, weeks, you will have seen a lot of modules releasing preview versions. Uh, so as you can see, the current version of networking DSC is currently up to an 8.0 uh, 8 preview. Um, 
when we are ready to release, we will tag the new version, um, add a new Git tag to the um, with the version number, and then push that tag. That will then uh, trigger a full release out to the gallery with that version number, and then submit another uh, pull request back to the GitHub repository to update things like the change log um, and, and the Git version version number. So all this is pretty much automated. It does take a little bit of um, uh, work to get the module up to um, into the state where it can do this, use this new pipeline, but we're getting pretty good at it now, especially with the, all the awesome documentation that's been uh, put together by, by Gail and, and Johan. Um, so we've got it down to um, pretty much a few hours to do the do the work. The only challenge is is that some of the modules um, have integration tests that might depend on certain elements of the agents that differ in Azure DevOps from AppVeyer. Um, so in one case, AppVeyer has all the side by side source um, files available. Um, whereas the Azure DevOps agents don't. So we have to often change the, the integration tests slightly to get those working, but usually that's reasonably easy to do. Any thoughts or questions about the process? Um, only some, we, we, we'll cover which modules have been upgraded so far and which ones are being worked on, but obviously if there's, we can't release any of these modules until uh, they've been migrated to the new process. Um, so if there are modules that really need urgent releasing um, because they've got fixes that need to go out, um, who are the, let the maintainers know so that they can prioritize those modules. I'm, I'm working in um, priority of basically the number of downloads. So I'm prioritizing things like computer management, networking, DSC and XPS desired state because they've got the largest number of downloads, but that might not be the, the best way to prioritize. So if you do have a module that needs to go out and one of the maintainers is in process or looking updating, it would be great to, to let us know which priority you would like uh, the modules to be um, refactored within. And I would add as well, if you if you're trying to if you're a maintainer and you're moving or if you're just contributor and you're trying to move to that new uh, release process, Feel free to ask us any question on Slack. Usually we are on Slack uh, pretty much, like most of the time we, someone's in on Slack. So feel free to go and ask questions. So we try to create like small chat rooms or, or direct messages just to avoid spamming everyone. Uh, if it's a generic question, we're just gonna answer that, but uh, otherwise maybe use threads. But if it's like, uh, if we're just going too deep into uh, the specificities of a module, we just create a new chat room. And one of the other advantages we are finding with um, using Azure DevOps is the ability, because we're able to run more, more jobs in parallel, uh, some of the modules are now moving to testing on both 2016 and 29, Windows Server 2016 and Windows Server 2019. So that gives us a, a little bit more confidence where we haven't been doing that before. So some of the modules like Networking DSC was only ever tested on 2016. Um, so now we, we've scaled that up to test on both 2016 and 2019. So it gives us a bit more a bit more confidence um, around what's going to work and what's not. So any any other questions, thoughts from you guys on that? And I would add as well that a few modules we have, not DSC specifics, but the DSC resource.test and DSC resource.analyzer rules also are being tested on Linux, on macOS, and uh, so, and, and obviously on Windows with the PowerShell core, and also Windows and Windows PowerShell. So, um, yeah, I think you're going to show one of those. And um, so that's also in the templates. You can uh, look at the templates and see how we're doing it. Uh, so you can reuse that as well. Yep. So um, that is probably one of the larger changes as well as the DSC resource.test um, module. We used to, during the CI process, we used to pull that code, source code directly in from GitHub. Um, 
during you know we'd actually just do a git clone but now this module is published to the gallery as a as a module um, and during the ci process the module is just imported from the gallery that allows us to pin to a version um, of dsc resource test so um, teams are able or people are able to choose which version of dsc resource test they want to use which will prevent things like uh, breaking changes or new enhancements that might uh, validate style um, from breaking uh, everyone's CI builds because suddenly they're out of, you know, un their style doesn't match the current guideline. Uh, uh, but that will then, uh, sorry, go on. Okay. Yeah, just at the same time, uh, unless you need to pin, at the moment we just pin to latest, so it always during the build process pull the latest version. So then you will get the new features automatically unless you really pin and you want to stay on one specific version. Yeah, that's right. So most of them, I think, are, are, are not pinned. So um, the the versions of the modules that are used are located in this required modules PSD1 file. You see in the root of all the folders. So you'll see things like this one is, is not pinned to anything. Um, currently, we only, I think the only thing we're pinning to is module builder version 1.0. Um, due to a due to a, is it an issue with module builder? Yes, there's an issue with uh, the way it's resolved. So I know uh, Joel, so Jekyll, Joel Bennett. He started the fix for this. I think it just hasn't released yet. He will probably release a version 2.0.0 preview, and then we will try that. And when this is uh, when this is fixed, and we agree that it's fixed for everyone, we just remove and we will put the module builder back to latest, and we will ask you to update that as well. Uh, any other thoughts, questions, discussion items on this? The, just as a, we we're going to jump, uh, do we want to jump over to the, the, the documentation content that's currently available to help maintainers upgrade to these this process? Yeah, I think that's a good idea to show them where the documentation is. And then if they have questions, how do they reach out? Cool. Okay, so the 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 documentation is is really extensive. It's, it's fantastic. It's been through through a number of iterations over the last month, six weeks that really we've been using it, um, using this process. So I think you can find it all over on the DSC community website um, under the blog posts section. Um, and we've got these these great blog posts. The primary one really is the steps to convert a module for continuous delivery. Uh, it is a bit of a it is a it is a reasonably long article, but once you get your head around it, you've done a couple. It's actually quite easy to do. It's it's very it's fairly straightforward. Um, so if you are planning to to do one of these, or if you hey you just want to stick your hand up and have a go at one of the the ones the the modules that are not up there then um, just have a read through um, there is some automation in there to give you a hand in some areas but some of it is just a matter of um, uh, editing the code and changing and adding the new files and so on so it is worth worth reading the whole way through before you get stuck in um, i myself have done done a couple of these and i i didn't read through it the whole way through and often encountered problems that were resolved later on and the documentation had told me what to do and I just skipped ahead and made an assumption. So it is worth reading through it before going, jumping straight in there. Uh, but as I said, it's, it, it, for a smaller repository, you can get it done, get, get this done in a couple of hours. Any questions, thoughts on that one? I'm not looking at the comments, by the way. Um, no, I'm looking with there's no comments so far. No comments. Cool. Um, so Johan, you've done Johan's really pretty much done most of this uh, this Everything. documentation. Everything. So He's done um, it, it's pretty awesome. So amazing job there, Johan. I think um, this would have been impossible without the work you'd done there. It's it's pretty awesome. Um, the other the other key article as well as this new DSC resource common. Um, so one thing we have found is that a lot of the DSC resource modules shared some common functions. Um, and these are listed down here and they're, they're really around raising exceptions, getting localized data 
and testing DSC parameter states. So this code ended up being duplicated in most in, in many of the modules. And this new module DSC resource common is an attempt to to um, move that code into a single place to reduce duplication you know, implement, um, and um, also drift because changes or fixes to those those common functions were often added in say one module or implemented in one module and they didn't make it to all, all the rest. Um, this module is something you can start uh, incorporating and replacing a bunch of code if you if you choose um, to do and this this document really lists how that how that works and how to do it. It's it's reasonably straightforward, uh, works pretty well. And obviously, if there are more common functions out there that that many modules are using, uh, you know, submissions, you can make submissions to get that added in there. Um, so you'll find that again on on the uh, GitHub DSC community uh, DSC. Um, Result of common. Common. And again, it's continuous delivery pipeline, uh, same, really the same structure. So again, um, there'll be preview versions and um, to prevent that. The key thing to, to remember here is this, uh, this common module is pulled down during the CI process and the code is incorporated into the deployed module. It's not used as a dependency in the PowerShell gallery. It's, it's not pulled down uh, as a dependent module um, during the installation of a DSC module. So, so just to remind everyone, uh, the problem is DSC doesn't own all the required modules in the module manifest, so it doesn't download it. Well, let's say if you use a pool server. So by using this, you can uh, embed this module. Uh, when you compile your module, it embeds it into your module and then it ships with it. And then you can use it in your own module using uh, those uh, functions from that module without exposing them to uh, other modules as well. Gail, uh, sorry, Johan, have we got which which module is currently implemented DSC resource? Has SQL Server done that? Uh, no, X, X Fellow cluster. Yeah, I'll just quickly show that one. Um, So I think you'll see in the required modules, there'll be a, um, is it in here? Yeah, yeah, there it is there. It specifies the dependent module and that will then cause it to download during the, the CI process and embed uh, in the output folder. So yeah, everything is documented in there. If you have questions again, just reach out uh, on Slack, but that allows you not to not repeat the code to say uh, manage the uh, local files, so when you want to localize the data, or or like some of the functions. And if there's things that we are missing, please do let us know. Cool. Anything else, Gail? You think we should, we need to dig dig into show demonstrate um, run through? Um, on this Johan? topic, no, I don't think so, Johan. I know Michael has joined. Hi, Michael. Hey, Michael. Hey. This looks awesome. I need to yeah, go through the build script and uh, just make sure that uh, for the projects that I'm running for guest config that they're using the same, um, as close as possible to the same format. <clears throat> These are really cool. good practices that you're setting. Great. Yeah, that's, it's definitely uh, uh, the release process has become really easily easy and slick. Um, so I guess that's a good segue on to our next item, which I don't I know I don't have the agenda up on the board anymore, but I guess the um, the current progress of migrating the um, these modules over to the new process. So how far are we along on that journey? Um, Obviously, it's going to take a little while to get them all through. And as I mentioned, prioritizing which ones we want to, we, we need, you know, which ones the community needs urgently to be released uh, would be really great. Um, the current list, and this is actually not quite up to date because I know, um, I know there is probably others moving on, but the current completed ones are Active Directory DSC, um, Networking DSC, SharePoint DSC, SQL Server DSC, WS MAN DSC, X failover cluster, 
X PS desired state configuration, X web administration, and GP registry policy DSC. So those ones are all completely up with the CI/CD pipeline. Um, they can be released on demand. Uh, so fixes should be flowing um, out for those ones reasonably quickly. If there is a preview version of a module out there and you're waiting on a, a final version, you're happy with the preview, you reckon you've you've used it, it's it's good to go. I think um, at the moment we haven't really sort of discussed how do you make a decision about should we release a, fi a, a full version or not. Um, I don't think there's any particular guidance, so I'm just doing it, playing it by ear. Once a preview version's been out there for a couple of weeks, uh, I'll I'll release a, and there's been no no major complaints, so I'll release a, um, a final version, but I don't know what the other community is doing and what the other maintainers are doing. So is there any thoughts on that? What are we, what are we doing to release a final version? I do, as you, uh, I feel. Uh, the, the ones I released now it has been, has had a pendant, pendant changes that needed to be released, but uh, in the future I, I probably release uh, unless someone says that they need it. Uh, we we release a couple of weeks in between. I think. Yeah, it depends how much you you are able to test it. Maybe in your environment, or if you have some of the people that that you know are testing it, then just making sure that it's it's sure and it's safe. And the, I think another thing that Johan did, and I think it's a good idea, is if you have a breaking change, like you know you're going to release a new major major version, maybe you want to bundle a few other changes, maybe. But uh, if you want to release, if you're a maintainer and you want to release as soon as you just do a simple fix, feel free to do so. It's really like at the moment, I think it's really it's good if we, if we provide fixes and we just improve, we should not wait. We should just release often mm -hmm. and then move forward as fast as we can. Cool. Is there any any uh, any comments from the community? I can't see the chat window. No, there's no comments so far. No comments. Okay. Um, it would be good. Is there any from the community? Is there any any requests to prioritize modules to move to the CI process? Um, is there any particular outstanding ones you'd like to see moved before others? You know, that you've got those urgent fixes. Just, just to add, in the in progress, there's also a update services DSC, which I started, but then I worked, okay. on, I worked on the template again, and I forgot to get back to this and update with a new template, so I will do this. Okay. So there's three, yeah, currently there's three in progress, computer management DSC, X exchange, and, and update services. Do we know, and was anyone else working on any of those? Um, any other resources, modules that are, that are currently in progress? I'm aware of. Okay. Feel free to tell us on Slack when you start. And then if cool. you need help, feel free to reach out as well. Um, and finally, I guess we've got a list of the resources that have been released or final releases released recently down the bottom. So we've had uh, over the last, I guess it's since the last um, release from Michael was um, which was, I think that was about six or eight weeks ago. Was that a couple of months ago? Does anyone remember when the last... Seven uh, weeks. Oh, no. Seven weeks? No, that went more, more than this. That was in 10, 12 weeks. Yeah. 11 weeks. 12 weeks. Yeah. Okay, so we've got... Well, since then, we've, we've had Active Directory DSC 5.0. We've had WSMAN 3.1. Uh, X failover cluster, we've had two two releases of that with um, 1.14 and 1.14.1. Uh, we've had XPS desired state configuration 9.0, as well as X web administration 3.11. There have been, as I said, all of the other ones have probably had preview releases, but they're probably just sitting there waiting to to go out with a final release. SQL Server was uh, released with uh, version 13.3. As well. Of course, yes. Sorry, sorry about that. I forgot that was that was the other uh, couple of yesterday was it the day or a couple of days yeah, ago? Yeah, yeah, well, yesterday I think or the other day. Yeah. So I guess the final question on this is how do we communicate um, these releases going out? At the moment we're using the Twitter, but is there a better way? Is there another way? What do we do? And the, and the other uh, part of that metadata uh, to the same question is. Like, I'm really curious, 
now that you're, uh, we are all collectively uh, releasing and pretty close to real time, has that resulted in an increase in PRs and issues incoming and then being closed out uh, or a decrease or is it pretty much the same? Um, I haven't, I don't really have a good way to go out and find out. My, my, our, our hypothesis is that, uh, you know, sort of getting the engineering team out of the way, letting the community move at its own pace uh, and being able to release and closer to real time would, the end result would be a greater amount of contribution um, because it's self-sustaining. But uh, I don't really have any way to validate whether that hypothesis was accurate or not. So. I, I think, uh, yeah. take go, uh, Johan. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think uh, it's true uh, what you're saying. It's because I think it's too early right now, but uh, I have seen one uh, PR being sent in. I could release it uh, straight away, a fix. So uh, yeah, it's going to be better for the community this way, definitely. Yeah, same here. We, you know, if it had a, had a fix for XPS desired state configuration, it only went through a few days ago, so I haven't released a final release, but that will certainly get that um, that frequency through. There is one out. There is one bug that was raised in V9.0 um, due to the new structure that I will need to fix uh, for XPS desired state configuration. But because I'm able to now release that, that should that that a fix will go out sort of within 48 hours of the issue being raised, which I think is a is, is a pretty good win. Um, the only other thing I'd add there is I think at the moment there's a bunch of PRs that are sort of banked up and queued up, and because all the maintainers are sort of working on migrating to the new process, we're not focusing on getting feature or fix PRs through. Um, so I think once we've finished all the work in migrating um, these modules over the new process, we'll actually be able to get get onto the the actual feature PRs and fixed PRs and get through that get through those a lot quicker. Yeah, that makes, that makes sense. Yeah, I think we need to reach like a, the critical mass of like all the, the of the existing modules, at least the most active modules and most used modules to be ported over. So then people start really seeing that a quick feedback and contribution can uh, be delivered much faster. We'll get there. Cool. Any any um, comments coming out in the um, the in no. the comments? No. Cool. Okay. Everyone's silent. Cool. Oh well, that's that's um, okay. Well, is uh, is there any uh, other stuff? Any other stuff we yeah, are planning on releasing shortly? Oh, not planning on releasing. I, I don't know now. Not that I know. I was okay. just. Uh, I just wasn't. Was I wanted to raise a happy note that uh, SQL Server DC has actually been downloaded one million times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Congratulations! Congratulations! <laughs> and the last awesome. release. And the last release uh, in five days has actually been downloaded thirty-seven thousand times. <laughs> pretty cool. Wow. Yep. That is awesome. That is awesome. I think they need a um, some sort of a, a badge system on PowerShell Gallery uh, for the Ooh. for the million million downloads club. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Cool. Um, any other any other? Do, so are we happy with the currently with with the information that's currently out there to help maintainers uh, get started migrating? Or are we you know is there anything out, any other gaps in the documentation? Do we feel? I don't think so. Maybe Johan, but I uh, I don't think so. Johan, do you think there's any gap? Uh, sorry, gap. Where I, I lost you there. No, no in, in the, the documentation. In the doc uh, for the conversion, you mean? Yeah. 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 Uh, not that I know of. No. Yeah, I don't think so because like there were, as you said, many iterations on like it's very detailed. So like it really goes through mm. every process and explains explains a lot of things. That's why it's quite long, but then it's uh, it's pretty straightforward because like it's well ordered, like the order has changed. I know it's really you follow through, like you read the first time just to understand roughly what's going on and then you just follow and then uh, that helps you convert your existing repository. And, yeah, and I think if to... you do, oh, sorry, go oh, ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was saying this, we're trying to remove steps as well. We have, it was actually longer to, to, to the beginning with, but we have improved uh, the sampler repo that uh, this uh, pipeline is based on and 
so we have been able to remove steps. Uh, I think there's still, if when I looked at it now, I think we have added a merge some changes into sampler, which makes some of the rows, uh, yes, two or three rows maybe that are already in there, so they they sh can be removed. I actually. When I convert next module, if or if someone converts a module, see something that's already in place and don't need to be there, uh, just uh, send a message on Slack so we can remove it. Yeah, uh, most most likely you will have less to do than what's in, in the documentation, but you will you will see it. It's just going to be you're not going to have to create a file, or you're not going to have to rename something. It will probably be done for you already. And it was the other thing is if you are get, if you are having a go and um, you do get stuck, uh, you can ping ping us on Slack and I think there's a couple of few conversations already going on, um, helping and supporting other maintainers that are that are doing this process. So uh, usually most of the challenges or issues have been seen before, and so we we know uh, we Johan and Gail mostly know what um, to advise. To unblock you. There's also there's other people who already did it. Like uh, Simon, as an example, has been uh, has been working on this, and he's, he knows a lot. Uh, Yorick as well has been uh, doing like a huge work on, on that. So there's a few people. It just it's not just us. There's a few people that actually know <laughs> exactly what's going on. Cool. And uh, we can mention that uh, previously we had uh, Code Co for code coverage. Uh, we are trying to get that back. We actually have a uh, waiting for PESTA to be released. Uh, so uh, we, we had to add a, a fix for the Yakoko format in, in PESTA to actually be able to send that file to CodeGo. Um, we are waiting for that release, as I said. So uh, once that release is done, we have a PR ready to be merged into sampler so we can get that. No, sorry. The, Use, yeah, sampler. Uh, so we can um, get that functionality back. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yep. And I think that was, we do still have the code coverage being measured um, and it is being reported via um, Azure DevOps. Um, we were just using the uh, CodeCov IO to do some rule, apply some rules during the CI process to say if the code coverage reduces by X percentage on a PR, block the PR. So um, it, again, the, the code coverage is still there. It's still available. Um, you can go and you know continue to monitor. It's just we want to want to use CodeCov for those uh, additional rules that help us keep the quality high of those. Um, so you can find the code coverage in the build, um, clicking through here. So you get a pretty decent report coming out of, um, out of Azure DevOps, uh, on the code coverage. Um, anyway, so again, check that out. Okay. Um, any other final comments, um, on the migration process? Cool. Nope. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. What was that? I said no. Nope. nope. Cool. Okay. Well, any other any other business at all we want to cover? Anything, Michael? Anything from from your end? Uh, the only thing I can think of, uh, if you get a chance with PowerShell seven, um, especially RC two, compilation should be working cross platform now. I'm not confident uh, in it working on Linux. Um, I think we've discussed this before, but the two open bugs there were uh, casing and the uh, delimiter in PS module path. And I don't think those have been closed, but um, compilation on my MacBook seems to be working all the time. Um, any validation of that would be really great. Like if you're finding issues, make sure you send it our way. Actually, was uh, talking uh, on Slack uh, in the thread. I can I can send you the link here in the, the chat window, uh, where apparently there's a problem with the casing of the D, yeah. the folder DC resource. Yes. Yep. Yes. On Linux. Yes. On Linux. Okay, so that works on Mac, but not in Linux. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Mac is not as strict on casing, 
there's a function within get dash DSC resources that's get DSC resource. And that seems to be where we need to either to lower or use a regex. Yeah. yeah. And we just need to find a time. <laughs> yes. Check that in. But. And I can tell you as well that uh, you may not have the same issue if you run on WSL, because WSL is not exactly Linux, and that could be. Cool. Any, any, anything else? Any other things we want to cover? No, I think we're good. If I, you... I have a question. Uh, you just uh, discussed the, the code coverage uh, 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 topic. Yeah. Um, uh, what we discussed on, on the Slack uh, as, as well. Um, with SharePoint DSC, uh, we, I would like to run uh, the tests for uh, SharePoint 2013, 2016, and uh, 2019 uh, in parallel because one run will will take about two and a half hours. So if we run that in uh, in sequence, that uh, that means we need seven and a half hours to run the uh, the, the full stack. Um, so I want to run it in parallel, but that means I get three different code coverage XML files. Um, over the past few days, I've been creating a script which is able to merge the Jagoco files into one file and also calculate um, uh, the, 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 there are all different kinds of statistics in that file uh, and, and calculate the, the, correctly calculate the updated statistics. Um, right now, I, I just have to fix one more uh, one more issue and I have to dive into the Jacoco uh, format uh, behind the, the scenes. Um, but if anyone has two Jacoco files available of two different runs of two, uh, different versions, uh, uh, SQL uh, 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 2016, 2017 uh, test or, or something like that. Uh, just like uh, in, in my case, uh, 2013, 2016 and 2019. If anybody has any of, the, uh, of those files, please let me know. Uh, I I'm interested so I can uh, can use them for, for testing uh, and validating that and that my code runs correctly. And then we can integrate that code into uh, any of the modules, so we can merge everything into one uh, one file and submit submit that towards uh, either uh, CodeCov or uh, uh, DevOps. Yeah, that's great. Uh, we probably need to add another step, but uh, we will discuss that on the Slack channel anyway. But that's great work. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I don't have anyone yet, at least that has uh, using duplicate. So, but we can. Uh, Maybe we can make one. Yeah, so for instance, if you have a different code path when you run on Windows uh, 2019 and when you run on Windows 2016, uh, that would be two run. And then what uh, Yorick is doing is like for this two run is merging the code coverage based on the two code path that you run in each other. So if you do this, if you have one running on Windows 2016 and one on 2019, which has different code paths, then using your scripts, uh, you would be able to see if your code coverage is actually uh, doing all your code. Exactly. Sounds awesome. Yep. Good. Cool. Uh, okay. If you if you want to cover something else for next time, feel free to open, like to uh, update, uh, create a pull request, or use other comment or an issue on the dscommunity.org repository. And on that note, good day or good night. Yeah, thanks everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you. Cool, thanks everyone. Have a good one.